hey hey will here with into mobile and here is the samsung galaxy tab and as you can see it's actually the sprint version that's why it's a sprint right there sprint samsung google bam samsung made the galaxy tab sprint is providing the 3g data connection right that you see right there and google is providing the android 2.2 froyo os which is actually not optimized for this uh this form factor the seven inch screen here <clears throat> which is why we want to do this little bit of a software tour so let's get started um well, quick uh, hardware over overview first. 7-inch uh, screen, right? Front-facing camera there, VGA. 3-megapixel rear-facing camera there with uh, LED flash, right? Okay, those are the major, f uh, the major points. Micro SD card slot here, hot swappable, of course, like so. Just uh, click in and uh, pop out like so, like that. Got a 16-gigger in there right now. Just going to pop him back in like so. And bam, you've got all your external storage and all that good stuff. So, software tour, right? This is Android 2.2 Froyo, but it's not exactly what you would expect. Um, it's it's uh, skinned with Samsung's TouchWiz 3.0 UI, which is basically um, what you see here. You see these widgets here. This is the uh, the uh, feeds and updates widget that comes with the TouchWiz. This here, well, that's not really a significant widget, but as you can see, you get these uh, three sliding panes. That's the three sliding panes right there. Sorry, cut off before. That's Samsung's TouchWiz UI customizations. And also, check it out down here. You'll notice that instead of phone and, what was the other one? Phone and browser, we have our two uh, soft launch buttons right here being browser and Gmail. You can customize those any way you see fit. Just drag this over here and maybe drag Media Hub onto, whoops drag Media Hub onto your dock right here. So you can change those up depending on what you use most often. Because there's no phone on the Galaxy Tab, of course there's no phone launcher, right? The two most uh, used applications for me, browser, Gmail, and coming in, and a very, very close third would probably be uh, Google Reader, which I have right there. I'm going to go ahead and move him to the home screen. So that's how you move apps, right? And uh, notice that the applications tray here is actually not the standard stock Android UI, and just to give you a comparison, this is Samsung's Google, uh, the Nexus S. Um, maybe not the best phone to be demoing because this is gingerbread, so it's going to be slightly different. But notice that the home screen, um, the home screen does look different between these two, right? But, I'm oh, sorry, home, this being the home screen, right? The home screens definitely slightly look different. You don't have these uh, tab counters here on gingerbread that you do on the tab. The launchers down here look different, right? And also, when you go to apps, you'll see the apps are different. This guy scrolls with the 3D waterfall effect of the apps coming up from below and falling off the edge over there as you scroll vertically. And you just get the app icons, right, just on a black background. Here, you scroll sideways. Okay, no 3D effect. And the app icons, if you'll notice, are actually placed on top of a multicolored badge that Samsung kind of automatically puts your app on that badge, depending on the color scheme of that icon. Um, that's kind of cool. It gives it kind of an iPhone feel, right? And, um, we, we you know, uh, to each his own. We like it. You may not. It's more iPhone-esque, so what, whatever that means to you. Um, a quick look at the market shows you get top free, top paid, and just in, as well as all the other... Um, as all the other uh, Android market features that you've come to expect. Um, some of the cool custom features of this guy, though, I want to show you are, say, the camera app. And for the camera app, I'm just going to show you this guy as a demo real quick. That's, that's the camera app. It, not too much work went into this guy because, I mean, it's a tablet. You're not going to be using a tablet for pictures too much. But it's cool that you can switch between front-facing or video and recorder there. Nice and easy, right? But you can also switch, if I can figure out where it is, camera, we're going to go to scene select, self shot, and you should see the camera now. Oh, it keeps failing. Well, that's weird. That's unfortunate. Okay, so moving on. Um, let's see, what's preloaded on here? Oh, you'll see Media Hub. Samsung's Media Hub comes preloaded on the, the, the Samsung Galaxy Tab. And what the Media Hub is, is you give it a second to load, which you'll see there, you'll see the little loading the loading signal, the loading sign. What it is, I don't have any media. I don't think I've downloaded anything yet. And if I, yeah, I have not. So um, you can go and download TV shows and movies from Samsung's Media Hub. And all, basically, you get all of these new titles. Uh, get them to the Greek, Iron Man 2, 300, Transformers, Polar Express, cool stuff. Up here, it's kind of, it, uh, it's a, it's a uh, flippable, kind of a flickable, flip, flickable. Uh, uh, pre-sorted list, right? Holiday movies, you have gift movies, you have uh, 
sci-fi fantasy movies, stuff like that, and you'll see them all under here. And you can actually toggle, right, featured sci-fi. You don't want featured sci-fi. These are all the sci-fi titles. Or if you want featured sci-fi, you just toggle that right there like so. Okay, so that's... Uh, Media Hub, and uh, with Media Hub you can download stuff to your tab to watch on like a like a plane or when you're you know not not able to stream a movie or able to sideload a movie. Um, one cool thing is Daily Briefing, and Daily Briefing is actually a a cool little widget to kind of aggregate all your daily information into one neat little app. It gives you weather, like we see here, right? Whoops. weather like we see here, powered by AccuWeather.com. You can also get finance, you can get stocks, like say, like say Apple. Save that. Like say Apple. Let's see if it, there we go. And you get the the side view, the horizontal, the the landscape view. You can get news as well. And you also get your schedule. Okay. So basically, daily briefing puts all your most important information, your daily information, right into one app here. And it comes with a widget that you can place on your home screen, so it makes it even easier to keep an, uh, keep keep tabs on all all the stuff that you really care about, like daily briefing. We're gonna put that right there. And there you go. It's all right there in the widget. And if you want more information on, say, weather, you tap it, and it brings you to the daily briefing app. Okay, cool. So that is daily briefing. What else is uh, comes preloaded on the Galaxy Tab that is worth a look. Oh, well, Task Manager is new. Check this out. Um, active Applications, Packages, RAM Manager. Okay, it'll give you RAM Manager, level 1, level 2. It'll give you, it'll tell you how much uh, RAM is being used anywhere, and you can clear memory. If it's getting kind of slow, you just hit level 1, level 2. Let's clear memory. Bam, 7 applications closed, and, and that's going to be all those processes in the background, not the apps. Now, the apps that are still running in the background, this is my active applications. I can end individually or end all. Pretty cool. And it tells you exactly what's using up all your memory and stuff and your, your, your storage space. Um, cool. Okay, so that's Task Manager. Oh, and one cool thing, this, since this is Samsung's TouchWiz UI, what you get is notice that the application bar on standard um, Android is simply just a notifications bar. It gives you all your updates and stuff like that, and lets you uh, let you let's say if you got missed calls, lets you go into your missed calls and figure that out. But with TouchWiz UI, they Samsung has customized it to give us some neat little features. You can actually toggle your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS um, orientation lock and silent mode straight up from the task uh, menu, which is actually really handy. Orientation lock being the handiest, you can also adjust your brightness of the, the brightness of the screen, right? Notice the screen brightness going up and down there. Or just set it to auto. I usually set it just to auto, um, even though it doesn't work very well. And of course, you still have your notifications down here, which you can clear like so. And then it goes away. So, um, little handy little uh, communications toggle and brightness control and the orientation switch there, built into the uh, notifications bar. But I digress. What we were getting into was um, some of the cool apps that come preloaded on the, on the Samsung Galaxy, uh, uh, Galaxy Tab here. Um, okay, I've downloaded all these myself. Um, what else comes? Oh, yes, Think Free Office. So Think Free Office is basically allows you to view and edit and make Microsoft Office documents. You know, Word, Excel, PowerPoint uh, presentations. You can put them right into the cloud and use this thing to uh, to manage them. So um, what you do is you go to Recent Docs. Say I've got a Recent Doc. What I did was I uploaded this to Think Free's website. <clears throat> you sign up for a free account, you upload this to the website from your desktop, and you can ac access this from the Galaxy tab. There's no side loading, it's synced all in the cloud, and it's uh, it makes it really, and there's also a My Docs, um, a My Docs browser, so if there are any other documents on the tab that you want to view, you view them through here, or, you know, you can just uh, get the docs that you have online. Um, works pretty well. It's free and actually um, I've used it for a business related um, task so it's actually really good. Um, I use it for a judging task for uh, top 10 gadgets. And um, let's see here what else? Digital 
frame. I'm not going to go into that. That's just the digital picture frame. Makes a lot of sense, right? Um, oh, and lastly, here we go. This is AllShare. This is Samsung's AllShare um, app. And what it is, it's a DLNA app. And what it does is this app fires up and automatically, as long as you connect it to a Wi-Fi network, it hops on your Wi-Fi network and identifies all devices that are DLNA capable, which means they can share media. You can play or uh, push your photos, pictures, and mo uh, movies to your to this thing. Yeah, so I can pull uh, videos off of the off of my NAS and watch them on here, or vice versa. If I had a DLNA TV, I could use this the the videos on the Gal Galaxy Tab to watch them on my TV using my Galaxy Tab as a remote. So that's actually really really cool. Um, so there, there you have it. That's a quick little look. Oh, and also the browser. Now here's one thing, of, that one point of contention. Um, in the browser, as you'll notice, um, scrolling everywhere was pretty much a, a smooth experience, right? Uh, most, most notably scrolling in lists. And notice here, this is, this is a pretty smooth, it's a pretty smooth experience, right? Just watch me scroll for a little bit, right? That's smooth. That's good stuff. Unfortunately, that does not happen in the browser. There are, for the most part, the uh, scrolling in the browser is a bit, is unfortunately, it really is a bit laggy, and I'll show you this right now. Okay, fully loaded, right? Now, sometimes pinch zoom also gets uh, kind of awkward and jerky, depending on how many uh, processes you have running in the background, but I just ended all those, as you remember, from Task Manager, so we should be all good. So, pinch zooming, pretty good, right? Some, a little laggy. Notice I stretch a little bit before it kind of... There it goes. Pinch zooming is pretty good. Well, good enough, right? It can, it can actually get bogged down uh, at times. But here's, here's my problem. Here's the, the lag right there. I just flicked it. I'm flicking it with my finger up and before and even... I can, my finger is done flicking before the, the scroll action actually goes into effect on the tab. Now, if I do it more slowly and I plant my finger and then decide, to, oh, well, I selected text. If I plant my finger and then start scrolling, it's very, very responsive. But should I sometimes flick too fast, it'll take a second to catch up with your finger. It doesn't always do it. Sometimes it's actually really good. Right now it's really good. But as you can see, um, it, it can get slow, it can get bogged down a little bit, and the scrolling is a bit jerky. I don't know if you can see this, but it can be a little jerky there. Not as good as iPad. But anyway, so that's a quick little look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab. Overall, great, great, uh, good software on really good hardware. Hardware is impressive. Um, good stuff, so a quick little so software overview, uh, overview of the Samsung Galaxy Tab.